Hey everyone, today we're speaking with Tiziana Martinova, who is a journalist and blogger who was forced to leave Belarus back in June of 2020 because of the political repressions. Hi, Tiziana. Hi. So unfortunately, uh, not even two years have passed as the war came into Ukraine and a lot of Belarusians decided to fight the Russian army on the Ukrainian side. Some Belarusians decided to uh, leave and some Belarusians decided to stay. You are one of those who decided to stay in Ukraine's capital, Kyiv, despite the war. How is life in Kyiv right now? You are staying in the city. Do you feel safe in Kyiv? Nobody can feel too much safe in Kyiv because uh, you listen on my stream or it's uh, every day every evening we have an alarm about uh, attack russian attack russian bombs too many uh, diversants on the street and of course, uh, the National Army of Ukraine shot. We have no panics. We have food, we have light, we have warm water, we have internet. Um, in Kiev, of course, because around the Kiev, the situation is more different. We have a logistics uh, with uh, food in uh, shops. Of course, uh, uh, none, another part of our uh, life is closet. Uh, this is about shops, saloons, restaurants, and uh, the same. But we can buy food, we can buy medicaments. Uh, of course, we see the empty street because people stay at home and when became scream alarm, they go to the uh, under, under, underground. It can be garage for a car under the big building in complex. It can be metro. And every time I say that too many German, a lot of journalists um, decide to go out from Ukraine. So someone have to stay in Kyiv, it's my opinion. So how does your regular day look like right now? I wake up in the morning and I became to work with news, uh, with Ukraine news, Belarusian news, world news, because I have eight resources, YouTube, uh, three telegrams channel, Facebook, uh, uh, my profile and group. Uh, so I am and uh, my family, my daughter, and, uh, uh, my uh, director of my translations and uh, my newsmaker, Kirill, journalist. And uh, we are doing uh, in our couple all this job day by day. Uh, in the evening, uh, the most evening of uh, in the week, we, we are doing, we are making life from Kyiv, about one, two hours um, to explain the Belarusian people, the Russian people, because I have a Russian auditory too, what's uh, happened here every day. We see this from the window, not from the phone. How is the situation in Kyiv overall? Can you go for a walk? Can you go to a store? How does it work? To go to the walk outside is uh, uh, we do we we are doing only if we have uh, some needest uh, about food, about uh, some goods in ordinary life to buy something. Uh, the the um, street is empty, the people don't go to the work. In every street, we saw soldiers with weapon, quarantine with COVID. It's um, very similar to this situation. 
only one difference. Sometimes someone shoots and sometimes uh, we have bombs. So um, what do you think and how would you describe um, actions of Biden administration before this war started? Did they do enough to prevent it? I will try to say it in English. The Biden opened uh, the box of Pandora. It was in June 2021, the 16th of June. 2021, when he the first time began to speak with President Putin. Because this conversation, this meeting gave Putin to speak about his power in the world, to speak about another world's leaders who speak with Putin and who have to speak with Putin and to have to make some decision like want the Russian government. They doesn't understand what the part of the world economy has Russia. It's a very small part. It's on a very big territory. Day by day, after this meeting in June, the Putin became more and more aggressive. They became to force uh, too many leaders of too many countries to speak with him in another language, uh, on language uh, of power. And the last, his um, documents, uh, ultimatums for USA and NATO, it was a final point of his, uh, in his madly head. When Israel doesn't speak with terrorist terrorists, they make a right decision. Because when you open the letter or the SMS from the terrorist, you became dialogue. And this is his victory, the victory of terror. When Putin go in the land of Ukraine, all country in Europe, in America, have to stay near Ukraine, not only with words, sanction, some money, some weapon. They have to ratificate of Budapest's memorandum, okay, we are not in alliance, our country, because Ukraine, I, I count my country, my second country, Belarus, and the second, my motherland is already Ukraine. But they do nothing. If we mean ratification of Budapest memorandum. All other helpers from friends of Ukraine, from different country, it's a, it's a big help, but it's not enough for this situation because every day in Ukraine, we have bomb, we have deaths of people, children, too many city, a lot of city, Kharkov, Sumy, um, Mariupol, uh, Makarov, Bucha, Gastomil, they're already absent on a map. I mean the building, hospitals, and the people in this city have no possible to go out from this military zone because the Russian army doesn't follow all agreements for them is nothing in negotiations they speak about. They say it's okay. You will have tomorrow uh, in Mariupol. And after they shot, the people go for this humanitarian corridor. In your view as a Kiev resident, what can world leaders do right now in order to help Ukraine? They have to kill the Putin. And they have this possibility, believe me. First, the closed sky above the Ukraine. They stop the war 
and they decided uh, the uh, all questions with not only with sanction mm -hmm. and with uh, the speaking with terrorists. So even before the invasion, uh, war in Ukraine has been on the front pages of most of the world media. Did you expect a full-blown war like that? Okay, we, um, of course, we know um, th that uh, the Putin subscribe uh, the decision about this war on the 16th of January. So in Ukraine, we know it immediately. But after uh, all analytics, uh, all, uh, all people who understand uh, uh, too many things in economics, in politics, uh, all about them say that this is impossible because this is a um, um, murder of Russia. The Putin is shooting by himself because no possible to win this war in Ukraine because Ukrainian people, they understand from uh, uh, 2014 uh, that Russia is evil, uh, that the Russia is enemy. And uh, nobody is waiting, the Russian soldiers here, because uh, in Ukraine, each one will be soldier. In every window, the Ukrainian people will shot for Russian soldiers and for Russian tanks. Um, I believe that someone near Putin, who was responsible uh, for the media war in Ukraine, it, uh, it was a very big money. It says that, okay, the Ukrainian people is waiting because the money for nothing, money for, um, for air in air, uh, in the pockets of the people who have to work in Ukraine with media resources. And the Putin is a um, man, is a person of uh, paper, not of computer, not, of, not uh, the people of internet. The Putin is the person from uh, paper reports, from his friends around. Uh, and it's a big mistake oh, to go to Ukraine now because of a region which in Ukraine, for example, the government of Ukraine, the people in Kyiv, um, the means uh, they thinking uh, that this is uh, Ukraine's uh, with uh, Russian mood, uh, they are, became the first in this war who said Russian soldier go out. We, don't believe in this war because this war uh, became the end of Russia. Nobody wants and nobody will have a profit from this war. The government of Ukraine, it's very important to understand. They have information about and their words, their action was very careful for people because uh, in Kyiv, in Ukraine in general, we have no panics. Uh, in uh, the day when all this happened, we didn't prepare, but we are prepared every day because uh, the Ukraine to stay in war from 2014. It's a normal situation when in your car, you have only full uh, bag, full of oil. It's a normal situation for Ukrainian people. Um, okay, in the fridge, we have uh, food for two weeks. <laughs> it's a normal for us. Uh, so how is the current situation with essential supplies, food, medicine, water? 
uh, we have no problem with it in general. For example, we have it in many open shops and pharmacy. Okay, maybe not every shop is open. Maybe we have to go around to looking for something. But if we want to buy the food, buy some uh, pharma, we have no problem. Only maybe some more time we need to spend for it. What do you think of Zelensky leadership in this challenging time? Today he is a hero. Uh, we have a funny meme about uh, Chuck Norris is called to Zelensky and Zelensky asks, okay, Chuck, what can I do for you? Zelensky is uh, now is uh, demonstrate the best part of him, I believe. The best part, I mean, uh, it's uh, brave. He is brave. Uh, he is um, doesn't afraid to call uh, the events, mm, particular words. Too many even sometimes when we speak about, we say something, it looks like something. It looks like a fear, for example. But Zelensky said, it's a fear of Europe. It's a fear of America. It's don't, um, he, be, he stopped to be diplomat. So we have Kuleba, he's a diplomat. Okay, this is his job. So if we go back a couple of months uh, before the war, what do you think of uh, Zelensky's action? Uh, did he do enough to prevent the war? Zelensky did all, everything what he had to do. Uh, because um, too many different power to force him to do something against Ukraine. It's the Biden, the same not only Putin, because if Zelensky became to ratificate uh, the Minsk agreement, it was awful for Ukraine because it's against the constitution of uh, Ukraine. So Zelensky understood and understand now uh, that the Ukraine people never accept this Minsk agreement and of course uh, he too many times uh, to say uh, to Putin to Biden so I'm I'm ready to speak about I'm ready to speak in different format about the situation between Ukraine and Russia but nobody listened the government of Ukraine did everything what they can in general, a uh, leader in the very difficult times, awful times for this country. And he do his job very good. So we get some multiple reports uh, that it's close to impossible uh, to leave Kyiv right now. Um, is it true? No, it's a liar. It's a false. Because the Kyiv is not in circle, uh, Every day, uh, the, you know, we have an evacuation bus, train uh, to go to West Ukraine. Um, or for example, who wants can go to um, Poland and in, in Europe. And it's too many fakes in the news about Kyiv. I believe the Kyiv now is a more uh, calm place in Ukraine. Um, more safe because from Kyiv uh, we and the um, government of Ukraine to make cooperation in this war. But every day and every month, the next time, day by day, we will see who's who. Not only this in this war, but in the future. Of Ukraine. And in the future, I believe we will have no questions about maybe we need party opposition in Rada because we're a democracy country. 
And okay, we have to listen opinion of each one. And if someone speak that Russia is a very good friend for Ukraine, so we have to listen. So you mean the opposition party that was pro-Russian? No opposition party pro-Russian. No, no possible. When you are in boy in some country, how you can stay this party in your parliament? How it's possible? I, I but when I go to Ukraine uh, in 2020, I always ask. Explain me, please, my dear friends, why, when you have a very big war with Russia on your east, how these people can uh, make some decision in your parliament? how it's possible in general. And always I listen, oh, we are a democracy country, we have to listen everyone. Really? Okay. It looks like uh, a twice standards. Twice standards. Double standards. Okay. Mm -hmm. Double, double standards, yes. Uh, okay, this is an um, enemy. But we are... Uh, says our em enemy, okay, you are welcome, you go in my parliament. So when we were getting first war reports, a lot of Western analytics actually said that Russian army is expected in Kiev within 72 hours. So in your view, as someone who lives in Kiev, what, what's actually stopping the Russian army from taking over the city? Russian army stopped the Ukrainian people. Not via Ukrainian people with via and without. The first, the second, all uh, what Putin have to do in Ukraine, he wants. He wants the first blitzkrieg for two, three days after the panic of civil people, and after Zelensky is uh, go out from Kiev for, for example, Poland, uh, Lithuania, something like that, because he is a fear of the big Russian army and say the king. But nothing of these plans not possible in Ukraine because Ukraine people fight for their freedom like for their life, because their life without freedom is not possible. They say the Russian army, the big power of Russian army, it's a very big illusion. I always say that Putin uh, will be need to shot in himself. Bullets will be already stolen. Uh, the second, uh, the Zelensky demonstrate, like I said before, the best part of them is very brave and strong president. So our victory, it's not a question about will be or won't be. Our victory, it's only the question of time. Analytics say uh, that uh, the Russia here already put about 92% of their power. I also have to ask another question. So obviously we've been following a lot of reports from American media and Americans who are in Ukraine right now. And one of those people is American filmmaker. His name is Gonzalo Lira. So uh, he reported a video where he is working in Kiev and he's just walking on the street and he's basically uh, saying that the fact that Zelensky gave out weapons to civilians just made things worse. Like there are you know, shootings, rapes, like lootings, things like that. So is it true? It's a liar. Uh, we have only one inch incident uh, when the weapon um, put in the bad hand of uh, diversions. And uh, in other cases, uh, we have verifications, uh, we have uh, volunteers' organizations, uh, 
and uh, all these weapon will be in the good hands. I say use it. I am living in very interesting uh, house. Uh, in this house, we have too many interesting people and the criminal the same here. The criminal go to the, this war and he will uh, shoot in Russian soldier very particular because <laughs> he can, they can, already can. I saw not only in America, um, in, um, in each country, and too many journalists, a lot of journalists, began to make their reports for hypes, uh, with a very clickbait title. And uh, um, they want uh, their understanding that uh, for people always need some information or uh, with scandal, uh, something awful things. Uh, and if you will be explain the truth, the truth is not so uh, interesting for big auditory. Because it's sometimes only uh, count count about uh, troops, about tanks, about you know, something, uh, decision of government. It's not so interesting. I think that um, after victory of Ukraine, and maybe too many years have to pass, and we will know the truth about this war, who became. And what the reason was about someone who make the whole process more quickly and more large in general. So, uh, SME and politics, uh, it's only the small part of this process. Uh, but we have always someone who pay for politics, who pay for SME, who pay for Viapon, who pay for too many things in this world and after to buy someone from them. I think it's a very big lie in general. And all of politics here in Europe, in America, in Russia, not only Russia, say lies. Everybody have a responsibility in this war about which we will know more later. Tatiana, you are Belarusian and uh, you were forced to leave Belarus because of the political repressions. Uh, so you came to Kiev and in about two years, not even two years, less than two years, since you came to Kiev, the war came to Kiev. So this is just a terrible situation in general, but uh, can you explain us uh, what is the flag behind your back? Oh, well, this is a flag of uh, the freedom people of Belarus. It's our Belarusian flags. It's our Belarusian historical flags. Uh, not the flags of Soviet Union, the Republic of Soviet Union. Symbol of our protests, symbol of our revolutions in 20, August 2020. The same flags I have on my car. So for everyone who doesn't know much about Belarus, besides maybe some pictures of Belarusian president Lukashenko or Belarusian dictator Lukashenko alongside Putin, uh, so what can you tell to the American and Western public? Who are Belarusians? Are Belarusians the same with the Belarusian regime or are they different? No, the regime of Belarus and the Belarusian people is different uh, uh, things, uh, of course. In Belarus, we have some parts, some little parts of uh, the nations who stay in these uh, paradigms of Soviet Union, it's um, people, of, I believe, 60 plus. There are some people around Lukashenko, it's about the general, it's about uh, the clerks, uh, high 
top top managers of government, uh, ministers, someone in um, administrations of region of different region. Uh, these people, Mir Lukashenko, and okay, they call. Are you still being in touch uh, with other Belarusians who stay in Ukraine? Uh, yes, we are call each other, we are right. Uh, too many, a lot of people to go to the west of Ukraine, and to the Poland, to the Lithuania, but we have and, uh, the people and the, my, some, some of my friends to go to army here. And too many, too, 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 too many Belarus uh, uh, stay still in Kyiv and we decided to, uh, so we will be here until we can work here because I need internet and I need the possibility to speak about situation. I run off regime Lukashenko. I go out from Belarus because I need to have a possibility to speak here the same situation. I'm not afraid about bomb, I'm not afraid to die. Really, I'm not afraid to die because uh, it's a not situation for people to be alive, 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 alive. And in one day to go out to another level, maybe. But I'm afraid only one thing, to be useful. I'm useful. Mm -hmm. What I will do in prison? It's no... Uh, it doesn't have any sense to have a uh, one hundred thousand people like auditory from YouTube, Facebook, Telegrams uh, to go to prison and to keep silence. What is this? For what? <laughs> I mean, in favorite questions. For a what? Right. I always say, if we don't have freedom of speech, what do we have, really? But there is a reason why uh, in the US Constitution, we have First Amendment, which protects freedom of speech, because if we don't have freedom of speech, we don't really have any other rights. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. Yes. You know, there are a lot of predictions and analysis and prognosis. A lot of them uh, did not come true. You know, the one we just discussed about Russian army in Kyiv in 72 hours. So as a person who is currently in the center of the country, who is at war, what do you think will happen next? What are your expectations? We will be winner in this war. After we will go to return Donbass, after to return to crime, and after we will go to make a freedom uh, my motherland Belarus. Mm -hmm.